The hen tena was invented by some Japanese radio experimenters in the 1970s. They couldn't quite work out why it worked as well as it did. They called it the strange antenna. Hen is Japanese for strange. The hen tena is effectively two loops, the main transmitting loop and a smaller matching loop. The antenna is about a sixth of a wavelength wide, half a wavelength deep, and the matching stub is about one-tenth of a wavelength up from the bottom. You can hang it vertically, and it is, slightly surprisingly, horizontally polarised, which makes it a very suitable antenna for hanging from a squid pole for portable operation. Its pattern of radiation is a classic donut. Broadside, it gives about 3 dB gain over a dipole, and it has a very low angle of radiation. So an excellent 2 metre or 6 metre portable field day antenna. For the horizontal sections of the loop, I had some of this k &S brass stock 5 sixteenths. I'd bought it at a modelling shop and I'd never used it. The time had come. Everything has to be carefully measured. At two metres, millimetres make a difference. Measure twice, cut once. For the sides of the loop, I used just a regular multi-strand copper hookup wire, insulated. It really doesn't matter. For the driven element part of the loop, I used some more brass stock, this time a brass rod. Again, measure it really carefully, and I bent the ends down at right angles so that they could be attached temporarily and then permanently to the multi-strand wire sides of the loop. There are plenty of calculators to get the dimensions for hen tenors. This one by LA2PJ was fun to use. So back to the driven element. It needs to be cut in the middle and connected to coax. I used this plexiglass or perspex piece drilled and filed to accommodate cable ties and the RG174 coax. The brass rods get a piece of insulation slipped over the ends just to thicken them up and then two tight cable ties to attach them to the centre bracket. The whole thing is quite rigid. A section of the insulation is taken off the side wires so that this driven element can be slid up and down to find the optimum matching point. A bit of soldering and the whole thing is pretty much done apart from tuning. Soldering this brass rod is a dream. And cable ties can be used to relieve uh, physical strain. With the RG174 attached, it's done. The driven element can be temporarily electrically attached to the bed sections of the side wires with small alligator clips. Now it's time to tune it up. I hung it from a six metre squid pole in the backyard. It's only about three metres high, maybe four metres. It just needs to be in enough free space so that you can take SWR or resonance measurements while you move the driven element brass rod up and down to find the optimal matching point. It's a bit of trial and error. You can find the resonance of the antenna with an antenna analyzer or any number of ways. 
The old fashioned way is to do spot SWR checks up and down the band, just don't use too much power. So at 144.1 it's 1 to 1, at 144.6 it's still 1 to 1, at 145 still 1 to 1. In fact I had to go up to 146 before it lifted off to about 1.3. A horizontal, horizontal. Okay, I'll move my beams round to you, Diamond Creek. Yeah, it's 100% better if you and I'll fly out quick. I need to give you a signal strength check over. Uh, excellent, uh, VK3UBU, VK3HN. Uh, it's ideal, isn't it? 